Welcome to another video. You're going to see a way to solve what is called a palindrome equation in this video. What is a palindrome? Well, a palindrome is just a way of describing, say, a word that spells the same way if you come from the right and when you spell it from the left. For example, the word madam is the most That's terrible, A. <laughs> but you see, it's M-A-D-A-M, -A -A and if you spell from the side, it is M-A-D-A-M. -A -A so it's madam. There's so many words like that. But what I wanted to see in this is you can have equations that have the same characteristic in terms of the coefficients of the terms. So this is 2 minus 13, 24 minus 13, 2. If you go this way, it's the same thing. 2 minus 13, 24 minus 13, 2. This is what you call a palindrome equation. And there's a special way of solving them. And it's good because it makes your life a lot easier if you just know what to do. Let's get into the video. Like I said in the introduction, this is not the only way to solve palindrome equations, but it is the best way to solve them because you don't have to do trial and error. You don't have to use the rational root theorem. You don't have to do synthetic division. You just have to look at it and say, you know what? Because the highest power here is usually, it, uh, okay, let me just say the fact. It is always most effective when you have a fourth degree polynomial. Why? Because what you end up solving is a quadratic or a bunch of quadratics. So what you do is this. Because this is a quartic equation, you're going to divide every single term by x squared. Now you're going to see where this is going. If you divide every term by x squared, oh, there's a question. Why are you dividing by x squared? What if x is equal to 0? Now, x cannot be equal to 0 for any equation that has a constant term. So, if x is 0 as one of the solutions, then it wouldn't make any sense because when you plug in x equals 0, this guy will still be here. So, it's going to become 2 equals 0 and it doesn't make any sense. So, for any equation, any equation that has a constant term, zero is not one of the roots of the equation. Okay, as far as real numbers are concerned, mind you. Okay, now, so remember what I said. The first step is divide by x squared. If we divide this by x squared, it's, let me just write it out. So it's going to be 2x to the fourth over x squared minus 13x cubed over x squared plus 24 x squared over x squared minus 13x over x squared plus 2 over x squared equals 0 over x squared. Remember we said x cannot be 0. That's why we can confidently divide. This is terrible too. Okay, focus Newton. So now what you need to do is this is going to be 2 x squared minus 13. This is going to be x plus. This is going to be 24. Just 24 minus. Now, this is where you start having those rational expressions. This is going to be 13. This is going to be times 1 over x plus. This is going to be 2 times 1 over x squared. And what you have left here is 0. So essentially, um, we have generated rational expressions and it looks as if it's ugly, but it's beautiful. Why is it beautiful? Because you can now combine whatever has squares and whatever does not have squares. Okay, so this has 2x squared and I see 2 over x squared here. We're going to bring them together so that I have 2x squared, 2 times 1, or let's just write it as 2 over x squared, minus, this is going to be 13x, and I'm going to bring this minus 13, 
over x, then I have plus 24, then I have is equal to 0. Huh, that's nice. It just cleared up so easily. Now we can factor out the constants and see what we get in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is this is going to be 2. I have x squared over x squared. And here I'm going to factor out negative 13. What's inside is going to be x plus. Don't forget the sign changes to plus. And this is going to be 1 over x then I have plus 24 equals 0. So you're going to ask me, so what am I supposed to do with this? Now, don't make this mistake of saying that this is the square of this, because the square of this is not this, okay? Don't say this is the square of this, don't do any substitution. No, that's not the kind of substitution we're going to do. But we're going to do a substitution, and the substitution is we're going to try to replace this guy because it is very easy, algebraically easy, for you to generate this from this. So look, let's say let t be equal to x plus 1 over x. We're going to try to replace this guy with t. Okay. What if we try to find t squared? Let's just play with it and see what happens. If we try to square both sides, see what's going to happen. We're going to have t squared will be equal to the square of this, which is going to be x plus 1 over x squared. And when you square this, see what you're going to get. t squared will be equal to x squared plus this will multiply this, that's going to be 1, and you do it twice, so it's just plus 2. And then you have plus 1 over x squared. So that's the square of this. If you foil it out, that's what you get. I don't want to spend time on that. Move this 2 over here, you get t squared minus 2 equals x squared plus 1 over x squared. Have you seen, but I'm showing you this because it's the first time, but once you know that this is what always happens, you don't need to waste time trying to find this. You just know that this equation is going to end up becoming, so this is going to become this. This becomes 2 times t squared minus 2 minus 13t plus 24 equals zero. So we have transformed this crazy thing into this and we can simplify this by distributing this. So we have 2t squared minus 4 minus 13t plus 24 equals zero. Okay, this 4 can combine with this. We're going to get positive 20. So we have a quadratic 2t squared minus, what is it? Minus 13t plus 20 equals zero. So I need to factor this. I know it can be factored because I know if I multiply 2 by 20, I'm going to get 40. So the question is, what two numbers will I multiply together to get positive 40? But when I add them together, I'm going to get negative 13. 8 and 5, clearly. So it's going to be 2t squared minus 8t. So I'm going to replace this 13 with 8 and 5 minus 5t. You see that? That's how you factor, plus 20. Now, if I put these two together, what's common to the first two? 2t. Two so it's going to be 2t. And if I divide this by 2t, I get t. If I divide this by 2t, I get 4. I'm done. If I go here, what's common to these two? It's negative 5. So I get t minus 4 also. So ultimately, Ultimately, I have 2t minus 5 equals 0, or t minus 4 equals 0. Let's write it here. 2t minus 5 equals 0, and you have t minus 4 equals 0. From here, I know that 2t will be equal to 5, which means t equals 5 over 2. So t equals 5 halves. 
But remember what t is. We said t is x plus 1 over x, which is equal to x plus 1 over x. Now, there are two ways to solve this. You can just look at this and go, 5 halves is the same thing as 2 and a half, right? So clearly, your x is 2, or your x is 1 half, right? Now, be careful. The temptation you have is to assume that x is 2, and you go home. No, don't go home. You'll be losing some marks. x is not just 2. There are two solutions to anything like this. So your best move is to solve this as a, another quadratic equation and get the two solutions. That's what I would suggest. Now, because I'm going to do that for the second part, I'm not going to use the quadratic equation to solve this. But if you solve this quadratic equation, you will notice that t is equal to 2 or t equals 1 half. Because it's 1 half plus the reciprocal of 1 half. That's 2. So it is either t is 2 or t is 1 half. Now, if you have any doubts, solve it as a quadratic equation, which I'm going to do in this case. So we also have t equals 4. Now, with t equals 4 means we mean this is equal to x plus 1 over x. So how do you solve this? We cannot guess or decide what it is. So you just multiply both sides by x. So if I multiply this and this by x, I'm going to get 4x equals x squared plus 1. So now I have x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. x equals minus b, which is minus minus 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared is going to be 16, minus 4ac is minus 4, over 2a, which is just 2. So our answer is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2, which is equal to, um, this is 4 plus or minus, square root of 12 is 2 rad 3, 2 rad 3 over 2. So that means x will be equal to, these are the four roots of this equation. Remember, we're expecting to get four roots, and we got four, all of them real. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.